Hello there and welcome to our segment, Cut Through the Noise, where today we answer your questions that we've been hearing throughout the month. Today we're talking about Russia, stock market dips, the San Diego housing market, and Canadian asset freezes. Stay tuned. Okay, Anthony, let's get into it. So um, obviously the Russia in Ukraine situation is pretty serious and you know, has a lot of people worried about what's going on with the stock market. Yeah, and we don't really know what's going to what's going to happen with that and how it pertains to investing. The market could fall further. It has to some extent mm -hmm. or it could be not much of anything. And that's the thing is that geopolitical events, they happen quite often. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the stock market doesn't react or it does initially and then bounces right back. So we have to be careful with uh, extremes. Yeah. So let, let's put a chart up here because I think this illustrates a really good point. What you'll see in this chart here is the different start and end time to different wars. And what you'll see is the blue line is the S&P 500. The main takeaway for me when I look at this chart is there's no direct correlation right. here. And again, when we look at this situation with Russia and Ukraine, these geopolitical factors, rather than trying to prognosticate about what the future might hold because it's completely uncertain mm -hmm. i think it's a better situation to stay grounded in true investment and financial principles and also look at history how is this typically played out history doesn't always repeat but it often does rhyme right. all right let's dig into the second one here which is stock market dips which we've seen year to date yeah and this plays into the, even the, the first part of it with the russia ukraine right is that market dips happen mm -hmm. quite often so the market goes down about three times per year on average of five percent mm -hmm. okay so those types of dips are very very common even when you get down to ten percent or or more um which is considered a correction about mm -hmm. once a year now as as often as these happen i think what is happening at least to the investor psyche is we're coming off of a year like 2020 right where right. we saw like zero volatility meaning ups and downs we basically only saw straight up mm -hmm. so i think what's happening is you're having this recency bias where people go that's a normal stock market right. and that is not 2020 was not a normal stock market where it just kind of completely ripped up after the bottom in March, you saw 2021, very little volatility. So now we're seeing choppiness and people are freaking out. And it's like, right. this happens a lot. It yeah. really does. We have to remember the volatility is the price of admission. If we're yeah. going to own stocks as the growth aspect of it, we need to be willing to put up with the cyclicality of it. There's going to be the ups and downs. We have to ride the roller coaster to some extent. And then that's where financial planning really needs to be brought in as far as do I have my emergency reserve or my short-term conservative assets to meet near-term Do needs. I have it there to create the income that I might need yeah. if I'm in retirement or I'm nearing retirement? And if I'm not near retirement, enough to kind of buffer that because if I can't stomach big drawdowns, I'd rather it's better to have a good investment plan that you can stick to than a great investment plan that you can't stick to. All right, let's dig into the third piece, which is San Diego becomes the least affordable city in the US to buy a home. Yeah, we're based in San Diego, so top of the list we and least it. affordability. And it doesn't just mean highest valuations on mm -hmm. property, but it also takes into account income. And, you know, I mean, you just have to think, I don't know, I mean, can it sustain itself at these levels? I know there's a million ways that you can look at the housing market because you can look at stats and go, well, here's the outstanding home supply right. there's just not enough supply the demand is really high so that's why we're seeing skyrocketing prices the other thing too is that we've had historically low mortgage rates so you combine that with low inventory yeah we're probably seeing skyrocketing prices however now that you start to see mortgage rates start to creep up i can't help but feel we are soon going to hit this affordability wall mm -hmm. <laughs> right because if you have high high home prices but low mortgage rates maybe you can kind of swing it when you have high home prices and rising mortgage rates, it's gonna make that monthly payment very unaffordable. I think a lot of people are gonna get priced out, just yeah. my personal opinion. I'd like to know what people think that are watching, what what they're doing with home affordability, whether they already own a home, if they're in San Diego or wherever their city's, their city's at. Especially new home buyers, right? If you're a new home buyer or yeah. you're on the market for a home, how's that experience yeah. been? All right, last point here is what's going on in Canada, specifically with the asset freezes. So I start to immediately think beyond this situation when people ask like, hey, what happened? You know, what do I do for this particular thing? You know, the government shuts down accounts yep. like they are. And that's when it gets to the type of planning where it's saying, okay, 
you know, the diversification, but it's not enough just to put, you know, in different brokerages. Maybe at that point you want to have some cash on hand. If you're yeah. talking about precious metals, like holding a gold ETF in your 401k is not going to help in this situation. So if you're going to own gold for something like this, yep. then you own it in a safe, you know, mm -hmm. even in small increments where it could be used to transact. Yeah. And in a situation like this, I don't think it's a bad idea either when we're talking about this, you know, having things like food, supplies, things for shelter, water, things for self-defense. I mean, this can become important if you are concerned about it. Those are the types of things that you can do because let's face it, let's not be naive and say this will never happen in the U.S. In my opinion, it very well can. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty scary situation to think of like how far reaching to, it is to mm -hmm. not only those who are involved, but even those that gave to a certain cause. I mean, we've heard stories of people giving 50 bucks to towards a cause and whether you agree with it or not, it's kind of beyond the point, yeah. right? And now let us know what you think. How are you managing your personal finances through uncertain times like this with Russia, the stock market, even the potential for governments to come in and freeze assets? Leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.